Hi everyone and welcome back to Writing Tips from GSCP Writing Support Services. My name is Julie Stigmeyer and I work with the GSCP in Writing Support. Today I'd like to talk to you about writing with clinical language. So often in psychological treatment, clinicians are asked to write reports or documents, such as intake reports, case conceptualizations, assessment reports, and case notes. And as a student, you are learning the proper tone and objectivity in order to practice this kind of writing. And to do that, you can follow certain guidelines to help you get started. So your writing in clinical writing should include precise descriptions. That means being very clear about the specific behaviors, objective or operational terms, which means looking at the, cl the client's experience in measurable terms. And then your writing should avoid value-laden judgments. So that means you making some sort of interpretation um, of the language, and I'll show you an example. And using colloquial language. Colloquial refers to everyday or casual conversation. So here's an example of being precise in your language. Instead of Joe is often found drinking at the local bar or coming up with scams to fulfill his addictions, you need to be more precise. And so I would probably break these up into two sentences. The first one about visiting the local bar could be client reports consuming eight to 10 alcoholic drinks per day. His total alcohol consumption rises on the weekend to 12 to 14 drinks per day. So this is just made up, but you can see instead of just saying he's often found at the local bar, you can see it's much more precise in terms of the measurable actions that are being taken. Here's another example. She frequently has insomnia. Well, the problem with this is I don't know how often it happens, how many hours of sleep uh, she often gets. So here's a better example. She reports that she has averaged four hours of sleep per night, five, four to five days each week. So now as the clinician, I would have like, or whoever's reading your report, there's a much clearer sense of what this person's experience is. The next thing is to keep your language objective. So it's kind of overlaps, but you, you'll see this is even more specific. So operationalize the person's experience when possible, which means giving concrete measures of frequency, duration, et cetera. So here, you are really making sure that you have those concrete measures. So for example, this one may seem like it's okay, but it's actually not sufficiently operational. He has been drinking since a very young age and the amounts continue to grow over time. His drinking has resulted in him being unable to fulfill his school and work responsibilities. So here, this is a different diagnosis, but you can see this is much more, or a different disorder and issue, but this is much more um, objective and operational. So what this is showing here is an actual diagnosis with substantiation from the DSM. What this student did was wrote two sentences, the therapist diagnosed the client, met all the DSM-5 criteria, and then you can see criterion A and criterion B. These are directly from the DSM. So what this student has done is began by saying the therapist diagnosed the client with persistent depressive disorder based on the client's reported and observed depressive symptoms. He met all DSM-5 criteria. Then the student pasted in the criterion A, and then it says depressed mood for most of the day for more days than not for at least two years. So then we have the actual experience of the client, which is the client experienced a depressed mood most of the day for more days than not for at least three years. Very similar, very concrete. Then here is criterion B, 
presence while depressed of two or more depressive symptoms. And then the student wrote, in addition to depressed mood, the client reports experiencing low self-esteem, low energy, and increased appetite. And then the student went on, but those are just some examples to get going. Then a couple of things to avoid are value-laden terms like extreme, very, or highly. These are up to interpretation, so you need to be a little more precise. So instead of saying Barbara began to experience extreme anxiety, you could maybe make a short statement like Barbara reported feeling anxiety, but then you back it up with much more specificity and operational language. Her body language and the timbre and pacing of her speech indicated nervousness. And then here's the last example, um, avoiding colloquial language. You can put the client's voice in, in quotation marks and that can kind of help you to include what the client said without making your writing um, colloquial. So instead of saying Jane's relationship with her ex-boyfriend was highly abusive and he made her feel bad about herself, you could write, Jane report, reports that her ex-boyfriend was physically and verbally abusive. She states that, quotation, he made me feel bad about myself. So you can see there that it's, um, you can use the quotation marks for your purpose to capture the client's voice um, while still, you know, but being professional yourself. So just as a review, you should include precision, precise description, very specific, objective and operational terms, and avoid those value-laden judgments in colloquial language. That's all for this, this time's writing tip. Please join us in the future for more writing tips from GSEP Writing Support. Happy writing!